friends. Hi. Oh, what a happy oh. Wednesday we should be having here. Mm -hmm. it, just being in each other's presence. I love my friends. Yes. <laughs> That's where we're starting. This is the energy we're starting with, guys. So Yes. Um, Chaotic, is... lovable, all the energy. Yes. All absolutely. of it. It's a good time. Uh, thank you for joining us for Here As You Should Know, uh, the double nerd show where I... Um, I tell you about a historical figure you should definitely know about, but don't. And then we turn them into D&D &D characters, because why wouldn't we? Uh, this mean? week, back is my beloved darling Amanda. Hi. You're this way? You're this way, I believe. I don't know which way. Hi! It, it gets Hello. mirrored. Yeah, I know. That's what gets sometimes a little crisscross for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would like to first and foremost apologize to you, Aaron, who is manning the booth. And everyone who happens to watch for my gross appearance, I got the timing wrong. And I literally just finished out working out a minute. And then Aaron calls me. He's like, oh, we're about to go live. I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so I apologize. Great. We made it here. We're good. Yes. I'm not going to apologize for how I look because I look the same way every week. And it's I'm just giving you this low standard. So when it when it changes, oh, boy, it's going to be a surprise. No, I, I really don't care. I like I'm very comfortable with how I look. Yes. So I'm just going to shower. You look beautiful. Shut your damn mouth. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so, so, I yes. have been so excited about this person that we're going to discuss. I literally, when we, I think I found a TikTok like months ago. And you I did. just like, I call dibs. And you're like, I already was 10 steps ahead of you, darling. Like, I already marked this specifically for me. I was just like, oh, yeah. yes. I, I found like a I found like a like a short article on 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 this person um, months before I even like thought about doing heroes and I was like I want to learn about this person and then I was like oh I'm gonna do heroes and then I was looking through my list and I found her and I was like okay Amanda Amanda gets this like no one else can have this it's for Amanda <laughs> no uh, the 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 audacity the the petty the the just boss energy the this is how I almost like I. Shonda Rhimes could not write more <laughs> twists and turns and drama and scandal and sex. Love Shonda, and baby. Yes. So I am all here for this. Uh, so who we are going to be talking about, as you can see below, is Julie Daubigny. I'm very, I'm going to start this off immediately as I do with every time we have French words. I'm so sorry to anyone who speaks French. The French does not feel good in my mouth. It's not well done. Um, I'm doing my best. I will. I listen to pronunciations and I still can't get it. I'm very, very, very sorry. I'm trying really hard. You're doing your best. Uh, <laughs> that's all we can ask for. You're doing your best. So anyway, so we're talking about Julie Daubigny. Uh, and one of my favorite quotes from her is, I am made for perils as well as for tenderness, which is so good. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, before we get into it, I'm going to say that a lot of accounts for escapades are kind of rocked around in different orders depending on who's talking about her depending on when they like were were taking down all this information so this is a general slurp of information <laughs> that is going to be loosely chronological but there is definitely a chance that some things got misordered because every single source i found had things in a different order yeah but. It's a lot, also let's we got to bear in mind at the time of who she was, there could have been a lot of things to alter on her history, hearsay, and all of that stuff. But so, yeah, mostly because the Jews legend. were in charge of history, and that sucks. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. so she was mainly or her, her main titles that you would see her under were Mademoiselle Maupin Ma or La Maupin. Uh, but her, her name was either, there are discrepancies on her name already, uh, either Julie, Emily, Julie, Emily, or in one case, Madeline. Though that might actually come from a book that was written in the 18th, uh, the 1800s that kind mm -hmm. of carries her title and is loosely based on her. So that might be where Madeline comes from. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> So she's born somewhere around 1673 to Gaston Daubigny. His name is very fitting. Unfortunately-ish. Unfortunately 
Uh, so her dad is a secretary to the guy who works for King Louis the Fourteenth, and uh, or the guy, sorry, the guy who looks after King Louis the Fourteenth's horses. He kind of trains them and it, like keeps them in good health and all that good stuff. Uh, so her dad trains the court pages who are going to work in the court of the king. So his daughter learns dancing, reading, drawing, fencing, all, all the things that the court pages need to know. Julie learns them right along with them uh, and dresses like a, like a young man most of the time as well. And she also sees the trouble they get into. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, her dad is something of a... Um, of a scoundrel, we'll say. Uh, he's an avid gambler, drinker, and participant in other aspects of nightlife. So we know what that means. Um, and her dad was super about her doing whatever the hell she wanted to do. <laughs> this just sounds like a Vegas father to me. Like someone, <laughs> I'm sorry. They're like, I don't care. You want to drink, gamble, whatever. And I'm like, that is a very, <laughs> that's a pretty open like, he's, okay. He takes her around wherever he goes, and wherever he goes is sometimes a brothel, so, you know. Hey, do you, do you. Big education very early. Uh, so somewhere around 1687, Julie begins an affair, or, okay. So, so I say she begins an affair, but if you do the math, it's very ick. Don't um, do the math. It, it'll. Gr- I did the math. I didn't like that. Yeah. So she's about mm. 14. Um, to be f- not fair, but to to take historical context into account, it is the 1600s. Age is a little more malleable, I guess. But it's still gross. Look, um, I, there were like, you gotta understand, like back then, people what lived till like they were 30? Yeah, well, I mean, not that, like 50. I would give them 50. 30 All seems right. like seems like earlier earlier times numbers 50 50 Fine. seems more respectable for that time when I the guess. play was around that yeah that was like 1400s there we go um but also from most accounts she has a pretty significant say in the matter and like has a pretty significant like she's she's kind of a driving force in this affair so there's it's kind of it's not great but it's less, it's less bad than it could be. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Anyway, yeah. she, uh, she begins, uh, things happen with her father's boss, Count Dominiac, who is the one that is in charge of the horses, like I said. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason, well, one of the reasons speculated for this is that on multiple occasions, anytime Julie had any kind of a suitor, her dad threatened to kill them. Just straight up. <laughs> it was like, come near my daughter and I will destroy you. And so Julie's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, cool, 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 cool. You can't kill this guy though, right? She went Great. bet. That's who I'm going after. <laughs> exactly. And she went challenge accepted. And she she found a pretty good, a pretty good, pretty good one she that he can't kill. Um, so yeah, so that's all happening. Dubiously ick. Um, so later in 1687, the count has her married to, I'm so sorry. Sieur de Maupin of Saint Germain en Laye, which is a township uh, close to the center of Paris. Uh, so he has her married off because mm, ick. Uh, and so she becomes Mademoiselle Maupin or just La Maupin. Um, and pretty much immediately after they're married, her husband is sent to an administrative position in the south of France while Julie remains in Paris. It I does still sound like it's her choice to stay in Paris, but the Count definitely sends her husband away. <laughs> Literally was just like, eh, get out of here. Uh, Ladybug, yes, I am wearing ear- uh, sword earrings in honor <gasps> of, of our girl. Uh, I did not notice that. Yeah, I love them. They're wonderful. I wore them for, I- for Zakia's one shot. Um, and I love these. <laughs> they are fantastic. They keep hitting my headphones and I don't care. Are they heavy? Not really, actually. I was expecting oh. them to be a lot heavier than they were. And I put them in. I was like, oh, this is okay. I've worn hoops that are heavier than this. So. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, sword earrings because she's a badass. <laughs> uh, Aaron said you could kill a man with those. Uh, if you got like the right angle in an eye or in a, like a nostril or like an ear. Goodbye. Oh my God. No, that's like the best little hidden like 
I mean, you're walking at night in a parking lot scenario, and you got two of them. Oh. Or it's like that. It's like that. It's like oh, I can't remember what it's from. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Derailed. I'm just, I'm just. You you get it. You get it. As we do. Uh, Lex, thank you for the little bits. That's very lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um. Anyway, so yes. Count sends him away, uh, and then pretty much. A couple months, maybe, after that. Uh, Julie gets bored with the Count. Or he gets fed up with her being, like, wild and crazy. You know, like a teenager is. I, I, I like <laughs> to think that she just got bored. It just, I, makes, I think it, it just makes it more fun. It's also It also, like, narratively makes sense. Because consistently throughout all of my research, it was like, and she got bored. And she got bored. And she got bored. Do you think she was ADD or ADHD? I got some major ADHD vibes from I her mean, a couple of times. I was honestly, just like, yeah. That's what I got. I was like, oh. Just from just from my own recent experiences. <laughs> Word. Ditto. Um, anyway. <laughs> fuck. Uh, so, no, please don't apologize. <laughs> Shut up. Keep this is great. You're not interrupting. We're having a conversation. This is what we do. This is great. I love talking to you. <laughs> I just love I just like to throw in my two cents every two seconds. No, so continue. Love, genuinely, it's my favorite thing. Don't ever stop. <laughs> so <laughs> she gets yes. bored with the count uh, and immediately becomes involved with an assistant fencing teacher named that guy. Serenes? Serenes. Serenes. S-E-R-A-N-N-E-S. That's how you spell his name. Uh, and shortly after, he goes on the run because he killed a man in, a, an, in an illegal duel, and they together flee to the city of Marseille. Um, so he seems rife for uh, for the, the the picking of her affections, I guess. Uh, so on the road, they make money by giving fencing exhibitions and singing in taverns or at local fairs. Um, and during these shows, Julie would usually dress in men's clothing, but she would bill herself as a woman. Um, so naturally, she got heckled a ton because, obviously. Uh, exactly. <laughs> She's Sorry, billed- not to all our good uh, male audience listeners out there. Our good boys we know love that you. we're not included in this. It's ah. So she, uh, so she built as a, as a woman and as a damn fine sword fighter. So it makes sense. It doesn't make sense that she gets heckled. Control yourselves, get your shit together. Um, but once a dude yelled that a woman could not possibly duel as well as she did. So she just flashed him like full tits out was just like, yeah, here you go. And yes, we know that tits do not make a woman, but for the time, First it was of all, very that's, surprising. <laughs> that's a level of like I love the uh, like just the <laughs> like damn she didn't no fucks zero uh, an absolute fuck it move <laughs> yes great it's like the end of night that's it you can't beat it go home <laughs> I, I feel like it was like mid sword fighting too like ba 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 boop. I'm gonna keep going now. Fuck you. And he and he fell silent. <laughs> so I could be so broke in the gutters, and I would st- came in and I would have still tipped her so much money, whatever I had, because I was <laughs> just like, like yes, that ma'am. was so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there is no better comeback. <laughs> Here you go. Amazing. Uh, so they they pull this these 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 fun little um, exhibitions. And they finally get to Marseille, and I think I think that's where they kind of split off because mm. Julie got bored. Uh, and so Julie joins an opera company because why not? And she Check sings it. under her maiden name, uh, even though she can't read music, which isn't uncommon for the time. But for being an opera singer, she can't read music. But she's got a damn near perfect memory, a really good natural voice, and some pretty solid acting chops. And she's super attractive. So it's like a perfect combo. And they're like, yes, come on. So she's there. She's singing. She's beautiful. And she falls in love with the daughter of a local merchant. And they did not hide this affair from her parents, which unsurprisingly was a huge to do. Mm -hmm. Um. Meg says, hey, that's how Allegra got through bands in school. You're right. I also could not read music. I would have Meg play things for me. And then I would play it my year later. Yes. 
they just like exposed you. That's oh no, she she has all. The, we've been best friends for more than half. Oh, I know. I just think that's great. If you, it's dangerous. I don't have perfect pitch, Aaron. I don't think that's what perfect pitch is. But okay. Anyway, uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Julie. Uh, so she falls in love with the local merchant's daughter. They don't hide it. There's a huge kerfuffle, and the parents send the daughter to a convent for her protection. But Julie is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. She goes to the same convent in Avignon, uh, takes the holy vows, and uh, joins the nunnery. Uh, doesn't get struck down by a lightning bolt, so it's pretty chill. <laughs> um, and what else? There's more. It, there is more. I keep getting distracted by chat because I'm looking. I'm looking over at my phone where I have chat it's up. I can kind of uh, see it. I didn't put it on because I was just like, this is such a good person to focus on. She's incredible. Uh, yes, Lex, kerfuffle is a word, and I'm going to continue. Thank you. I, you think I'm joking? I wrote that down. I was just like, yes. mentioned that Lex said kerfuffle because that was such a great word. It's a good word. Kerfuffle's a fun word. It kind of makes me think of like an angry chicken, like it's a kerfuffle. Yeah, that's, there you go. Um, anyway. She takes <laughs> vows. Yeah, She's a nun out. now. She's making out with her girlfriend in a nunnery uh, and they start planning their escape. Eventually. And how do they uh, escape? Eventually one of the older nuns dies. Uh -huh. <laughs> they steal the older nun's body, mm -hmm. put the older nun's body in the girlfriend's bed, set the nunnery on fire and peace the fuck out. <laughs> I... There's so much to discuss. By the way, and we're not even done yet. This is like only like season two of this beautiful, beautiful like experience of a show that I've just made up in my head. I'm like, Eric that's the season two finale. Samuel's origin story. Oh, I'm glad we've I'm glad we've exposed you now, <laughs> Samuel. You have to think of a different backstory for for when it what all if, comes out. What if Samuel's the reincarnation from? <gasps> no, I don't want this to be the reincarnation. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. Okay. I, I just. I just. I'm. I. I I'm sorry. That was bad. That was a bad no. pitch. <laughs> I take it back. Sorry, Aaron. No. No. Um. Anyway, they get out. They piece the hell out of the fucking nunnery in Avignon, and they go on the run. And as you would expect, after three or so months, one or both of them gets bored, and the girlfriend goes back home to Marseille. Um. Unsurprisingly, her parents are shocked that she's alive, <laughs> and take the case to court. Because the entire point was to make it look like she and Julie had died in the fire. And then they they come to see their daughter alive in front of them. And they're like, hang on just a second. Um, so they take the case to court. Julie is sentenced to death in absentia because they still can't find her. Uh, and the crimes that she's, she's called down on are arson, desecration Fair. of the body, definitely fair happened. yeah like two of them are very fair the third one is like questionable because it I, seems like the girlfriend was super into go along with it, it mm, i'm gonna mm, yeah i think there needs to be a judge ruling on that one like a secondary look on that but definitely the desecration of body that's that i would be no, like that was, desecration yeah <laughs> that was that, that was in poor taste that was definitely in poor taste not great i, I got it basketball and like some towels could have worked. Um, anyway, so the, the plan is to try her as a man because either because they can't fathom that a woman could do such a thing or because they wanted to spare the family the shame of having a daughter in a gay relationship. Oh, why not have both? <laughs> um, yeah, so Julie's on the run. They're still trying to catch her and like, uh, what's the sentence her? Uh, but Julie is just kind of out. Fleeing? Sorry, what? Is, is she just fleeing? She's, yeah, she's just chilling out in the French countryside, wandering and singing and dueling and dodging the law. Um, during one such duel, she defeats a young man uh, by stabbing him through the shoulder. Uh, and he turns out to be a grandee, which is a Spanish or Portuguese nobleman named mm. Louis Joseph d'Albert de Luines. Um... Also, can we talk about the fact that we know the exact rank and name of the dude that she stabs and then later sleeps with? We have no idea what the name of her girlfriend that she burned down a nunnery with is. 
They took that to the grave, honey. <laughs> they were not releasing that info. God damn it. I want to know. I just, I, just, I just think she deserves a little credit, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, so much. <laughs> Eli just says, history. And I'm, you're right. <laughs> you are correct. Um, anyway, so she stabs him. He's, you know, in the hospital. Uh, and through some turn of events, Julie goes to see him and ends up nursing him back to health after they bone in a hospital bed. Just because she's like that. She just can. <laughs> I love a good chaotic bisexual. Good chaotic it's bisexual. Just, it, there's just something about it. like it's A the, chaotic sword bisexual. Like, she's hitting all the markers. Yes. <sighs> oh, my God. Okay, so we're, we're at the hospital. Ladybug says that seems to violate HIPAA. You're not wrong. <laughs> Although HIPAA was probably pretty lax in the French countryside uh yes so they're uh they bone some people say they become lovers others just say that they're just lifelong friends because what's a little stabbing between old chums <laughs> i could kind of see it though either or yeah i just I think, think that would be hilarious like friendship no oh yeah i would love i'm that okay with e Jordan story of my friendship i'm just How'd you become that friends? would be oh, yeah, she stabbed me what? Yeah, we had a duel. She stabbed me. I deserved it. She made I mean, like, we totally did it to make up for it. But yeah, we, we uh, just realized we were really good friends afterwards. Like, how great God. is that? She likes to duel. She likes girls. She likes this. I mean, what's not to love? I like to duel. I like girls. I like sword fight. Match made in heaven. Friendship mm -hmm. forever. Uh, <clears throat> so she's been traveling, like, around Marseille. And she's been traveling around the French countryside. And she decides to head back to Paris because why not? Uh, she keeps making a living while singing. Uh, on her way back to Paris, she trains under an old uh, opera an opera actor called Merchal. Uh, and he teaches her until his alcoholism gets really bad. And he either sends her away or she leaves. Mm. Uh, she takes another lover, another opera singer, um, Gabriel Vincent Fevenard, uh, for a short time when she reaches Paris. Um, I think... This seems like like a like an opportunistic <laughs> boyfriend of like, hey, I just got back. I'm dodging the law. Can I hang out with you for a little bit? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so at the time, there's obviously still a death warrant on her head. So she goes to her old flame, Count Zamignac, uh, and she's like, hey, I did this thing. Can you please petition the king for me to be pardoned? And Zamignac's like, sure, why not? So he goes to the king. He goes to King Louis Fourteenth. Tells him the story, and King Louis the Fourteenth had a, uh, a notoriously rocky relationship with the church, so he thinks this is fucking hilarious. And he's like, "Absolutely, would... full pardon. Get the fuck out. You're good." <laughs> it's one of those like it's like how you like especially when you did the campaigns. You're just like, technically, I shouldn't allow this, but this is this is like tickling me in a oh. great funny way. I'm going to. This, this is go. the same reason I say yes to you guys whenever I run games because you come up with crazy shit and I'm like I want to see what what happens here. <laughs> what? Do it. That's what he's like. I want to see what else happens. Go get out. You're free. Yeah. Uh, so she's back in Paris. She's pardoned, and the Paris Opera hires her in 1690. Now, if you've been keeping up with the math and all the crazy shit she just did, she's 17. God dang. <laughs> <laughs> she's a all this is so much shit. And she's like, yeah, all right. I'm going to go yeah. be an opera, like a professional opera singer at the Paris no. Opera. I'm 17. She's ADHD. No, she has ADHD. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. You cannot. Cr this couldn't even fit into a movie trilogy. There's so much. I know. So much content. So like, <laughs> you could have as many episodes as The Simpsons and you would still not reach all of it. So I'm just saying. I love her. It's a lot. I want to be her when I grow up. I'm 26. She was 17. I want to be that cool. Damn. Uh, yeah, so so the initial year is her, but she befriends an elderly opera singer named Bouvard, who uh, convinces the opera director, Jean-Nicolas de Francine, to accept her. And they are very happy they did because she is, as we said before, incredibly talented, very beautiful, uh, some said she had like close to a photographic memory, but for sounds, is that eidetic? I can't remember. I can't remember what the phrase is for when it's like a sound memory, but she had that. 
Oh. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, all you got is someone yeah. in the chat say what it is. Help, please. Um, so she first appears in the opera later that year uh, as Pallas Athena in Cadmus et Hermione by Jean Baptiste Lullet. Um, and that's the only one I'm really going to talk about because she does a lot of work with the opera and that's great. Um, but it's not terribly interesting. It's all operas that I'm sure if I said the names of, none of us would actually know what they were. And it just, it'd just be like a string of facts while I could tell you a fun story instead. So she does a bunch of operas. She's very well liked. Everyone thinks she's incredible. They think like her like vaguely androgynous look is very sexy. Um, uh, she's well loved as a performer, but the cooler stuff she does is off, is off stage. So that's that's like the first one we're going to talk about because she's Athena, which rocks. And then we'll we'll just continue on. Uh, so she starts out performing as a soprano, and then later as a contralto, uh, and is said to have the most beautiful voice in the world. Uh, and actually, in the future, some of the operatic roles that she takes on are rewritten to accommodate her lower natural range. Even though she even though she can sing soprano. Like, Contralto is definitely, like, her, her, uh, bailiwick, as it were. Uh, and so, so they're like, yeah, you, you sound great down here. Let's put it down here, which is cool. Uh, her stage name yeah. is Mademoiselle Maupin. Aaron says, list the operas. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> so, unsurprisingly... She takes several lovers in her time at the Paris Opera, both male and female, as expected. Mostly I, I, her castmates, I mean, because no one knows how to avoid showmances yet, apparently. God, I'd love a good showmance. Oh, they are painful, friend. <laughs> they are rough. Oh, I know. Well, it's good the when I get to watch it. through. Yeah, no, no. It's exactly. great. Interesting. I remember, like, tween years. <sighs> now it's like, don't do it. Mm -mm. Not this one. Go back to past baby me and be like, hey. I know you're having a lot of feelings right now. Shut that shit down. Time um, out, time out. We're going to come back. Did you have a showmance? I had multiple and it was unfortunate. <sighs> I never had a showmance. And it was when I thought I was only into men. So it was just terrible. Oh, oh, oh this is even more interesting. Okay, it's not, not the time. case. No, we, won't, we won't air this out. We'll talk no, after. We're not going to air this dirty laundry. <laughs> Suffice it to say, showmances. If there are any little baby theater babies watching run away from showmances they are not for you uh they work well in your brain do that in your brain yeah you could write that fan write that self yeah. fan fiction that oc <laughs> headcanon <laughs> fan fiction and then throw that shit away wait until after the show and if after the yeah. show and after a, an amount of time after the show you still have feelings for that person fucking go for it bro but yeah, not during the show that's the sleep deprivation talking <laughs> Nah, just change the character names to like something from Twilight and you'll get a book deal. <laughs> and I guarantee you people will still read it. Uh, now that we've gone on that very, very personal oh tangent. Um, <clears throat> so, unsurprisingly, at, at, she continues dueling and fighting and brawling and doing all that she does. At one point, she challenges a creepy fellow actor named Dumanil to a duel after he harasses some of the other actresses, asks her out and she nudies him, and then he calls her a slur. So she's ready to fucking throw down. And all the other actors in the company are like, no, 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 don't do this. They intervene at the time. They pull them apart. They don't fight. But then later that night after the show, <laughs> she <laughs> waits for him outside the theater, beats My his ass with a cane, and steals his watch and his snuff box. Amazing. The next day, uh, he comes in all like battered and fucked up and tries to tell this story about how he was mugged by multiple men and he tried in vain to fight them off. And then in comes Julie <laughs> and she hears him doing this shit. She's like, mm -mm, nope, that's not true. Pulls out his watch and his snuff box and is like, it was me, bitch, just me alone. And everyone laughs him off the stage. Da -da 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 -da. Damn. <laughs> um, it was so me. T'was I. Uh, and taking trinkets actually becomes kind of uh, a, a, a practice after her duels because men simply refused to admit it was her alone who beat them. So she's like, I got fucking proof. <laughs> I got everything. 
Great. Amazing. I actually made that. I made that kind of a part of my sheet. FYI. The oh, fact that you have thoughts about what I figures. think. <laughs> yes. I, I have so after the beat there. Oh, what do you got? Did you do Bard Rogue? I did a for the first time. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. A multi class. <gasps> yes. Okay. I, I've I been always like. I've been like, oh, is it Sergio who's like, no, stick with one class until the end, and then like I kind of follow his round. I'm like, I love him, but no. he is. <laughs> I was just like, for this one, this one was too. Yeah, I had a multi class this one. There's so much. Uh, we'll get to it in a minute. Um, yes. Anyway, so shortly after this incident of kicking this dude's ass, uh, she has to flee Paris again. Oh, why you ask? Well, it is 1695. She is now. 22. Uh, and King Louis XIV's brother, Philippe, holds a ball. And Julie goes, dresses a man, and kisses a young woman on the dance floor. And then she is immediately challenged to a duel by three entire men who have been trying to court this same woman. And she's like, let's fucking go. Hell yes. Uh, takes them outside, fights them all by the same, one after another. Or there are some counts that have her fighting them all at once. Uh, I almost like that. I almost like the idea of one after another because when you get to the three, the third dude, he's got to be shitting his pants because he just watched her destroy two other dudes in front of him. Look, it's either that or she's taking them all at once. Which would also either be way. It, hot. That gives me like Elizabeth Swan in like Pirates Two in that bar scene. <laughs> That's where I'm like, mm. I. Ugh, pirates 2, Pirates 3. I have a lot of feelings about pirates. <laughs> I think I think I, I think we all do. Yes. <laughs> um, so she kicks all their asses, us. either wounds or kills all of them. There are Dang. conflicting reports. Um, and then just goes straight back into the party. <laughs> just like, cool, we done here. Bye. I'm gonna go make out with that girl again. A legend. So the thing is. Honor dueling has been illegal for a while. Julie's been doing it this whole time, but honor dueling is very much illegal uh, and punishable by death as it is seen as a direct challenge to royal authority. Um, and this was at the, uh, the brother of the king's ball. So she can't really get away from it. So she just pieces out. Uh, she goes to Brussels where she becomes the lover of the elector of Bavaria for a while. Uh, but she, unsurprisingly, proves to be too much for him. Uh, she, while there, excuse me, while there, she does very much stab herself for real on stage with an actual dagger for the art, I guess. She black swanned it, basically. Essentially. So yeah. she does that, and then he's like, okay, okay, I'm done here. And he tries it to. It was get too her. much. Too much for me. I didn't sign up for these. <laughs> Uh, he offers her 40,000 francs to leave. Just go. He's like, please, I will give you this money to get the fuck out of my house. And that pisses her off. She throws it at his crotch and then runs off to Madrid. There are also some accounts where she pushes him, pushes him down the stairs. Who's to say which is true? Both hilarious. The fact that she just said, <sighs> fuck your money. <laughs> just threw yeah. it at him. <laughs> could, could have just like gone off and lived a life somewhere else that wasn't Paris. And then was like, no, nah, my pride is worth way more than that. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, in Madrid, she is a lady's maid to a, uh, a count countess named uh, Countess Marina. Uh, but apparently, actually surprisingly, they hated each other. And uh, Julie doesn't stay there super long and leaves pretty quickly. Uh, and it said that on the night that she leaves, she puts slices of radishes in the countess's hair. I think... To like what try and I think it's I I think it like dyes it different colors or is that turnips? Damn, I can't I don't remember. No, I think that was just like what is that for like ants or something? Or it could be ants. That's also a good thing. It could be. It could dye her hair a weird color or give her ants. Both, not great. I mean, both petty as fuck. I love it. It's petty. It's annoying, and it could get worse. So you know what? It's not like she's gonna lose out. Uh, so she dips. She's out uh, and she goes back to Paris where, unsurprisingly, uh, either the king or his brother pardon her. 
citing that the Dooley laws only apply to men. And since she isn't <laughs> one, she can just go. That's hilarious. Because he's like, you're back. I knew it. I knew you would do some shit if I let you go. It works in your favor. Great. I mean, uh, he loved getting news about this woman. Oh, I guarantee you, some courier every day had a letter and he was just reading. <laughs> he was like so fully just like a patron for her. He was like, what's Julie going to do next? <laughs> yeah. um, go, go play. So it's 1702. She returned yeah. to the opera and she performs in an opera that is written specifically for her. I like that she's been gone for years and they're like, they're thinking about her so much. They're like, oh, when will Julie return for more? And then she comes back and they're like, Julie, we have this perfect part for you. We wrote it for you. Please come back to us. <sighs> Amazing. Uh, Lex yes. says he only, he said only gays deserve rights. We'll actually talk about that in a minute because 17th century France was very interesting. So hold that thought. We will come back to it. Um, so she returns to her husband for a hot second. Did you forget she was married? Because I sure did when I came back to this. Um, but she's still out there brawling and dueling and being chaotic, which we love. Uh, and unsurprisingly, the reunion with her husband does not last long because she falls madly, deeply, fully in love with a woman named Madame La Marquise de Florensac, who was called the most beautiful woman in France. Uh, and they fell into a relationship that actually lasted a lot longer. I think it lasted longer than any relationship, but technically her husband, which can we count that as lasting relationship? I don't think so. I don't think we do. Uh, so it's probably her uh, longest relationship. Nice. Uh, and they, they're like proper in love. Like they live lived in perfect harmony for two years. Like they were it for each other. Until Florence Sack dies of a fever in 1705, which is uh. heartbreaking. Uh, and the death of Florence Sack kind of wrecks her. Like she's she's done all this shit and seen all this shit and gone through all this shit. And the death of this woman just straight God up destroyed her. Dang it. I, Even in history, the lesbians never would. I'm sorry, not lesbians, but bisexual. The gays always got to suffer. Gaze. It's a barrier. Oh, it's a barrier gaze in, in real life. life. It's horrible it's so sad she leave like she can't even perform at the opera anymore she leaves the opera oh. retires and according to history either joins a convent for real or goes back to live with her husband until she dies at age 33 in 1707 i don't think that's the case personally um but it it might be to be fair not to be fair, actually to be correct. Um, this could very well be a rewriting of history by her male contemporaries because her male contemporaries are the ones who are keeping track of the history and they're probably real pissy that this bisexual badass, one, can pull more girls than they can and two, never loses. So I'm sorry. This feels like the ending almost to how game of thrones is well, you get this big thing and then a quick rack and then a quick shitty wrap up and then you're like didn't this happen you're like wait a minute wait a minute i'm missing a whole big chunk this is a big character arc that all of a sudden all what's going on i don't what believe can, you exactly so so the so the, the the narrative that it seems like they're trying to push yeah. is that either she joined a convent to repent for all her sins or she saw the error of her ways and went back to her husband, her true love. Like, fuck that. No. The girl she was in love with died two years ago. And she quit doing the other thing that she loved. Like, I don't buy... Like, maybe she went back to her husband, but I don't think it was like a, I want to go back to my husband to go back to my husband. I think it was very uh, much Yeah, better. no. I don't know what else to do. I think she went through a little bit of, like, she went back, went through a funk... Because mm -hmm. that was it. That was it. That was the that was the one uh, OTP right there, and then she was just like, "All right, I want to rebound a lot, do my stuff," and then eventually she did die, and they're like, yeah, "Okay," and then, and then she went back to her husband, and then repented. Exactly. Like, there's no real like solid answer on what she did, but it feels like that's the kind of narrative that male contemporaries would try to push. So, um, it's lazy uh writing. <laughs> So it's, it's 17th century France. 
well, 17th into 18th century France. Um, and this is actually a really interesting time and place and kind of the perfect place and time for her to be. Um, so she has King Louis XIV essentially as a patron because he is using the arts to try and undermine the political power of the church. Uh, so his main move right now is to project himself as a divine right monarch, which basically means he was picked by God to rule. Um, so before so before King Louis XIV was born, his mother had a series of stillbirths and miscarriages for years leading up to when he was going to be born. And so when he was born, he was seen as kind of like this divine gift. And that's kind of the narrative that the royal family pushed. And then when he came into the throne, also he was four when he took the throne. throne so his mom, obviously his mom was reading for a little bit and then he took over. Um, but so that's like, that's the, that's the narrative they're trying to push. And cardinals and popes and pastors, or I don't know if pastors is the right word, uh, priests, are all trying to like exercise their right, they're like, they're not their right, their power over the political world of, you know, 17th and 18th century France. And a lot of it isn't anything that he agrees with. And also he thinks he should have all the power. So, um, so this is kind of, why like this is this is the 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 context for why one of the reasons why he thinks her burning down the convent is fucking hilarious and also she's in the eyes of the church kind of a degenerate and kind of you know all over the place and wacky and doing doing all these things that the church isn't really going to follow or like sanction so she's so she's immediately like high in his standards of like yes and he, you know, he did a bunch of stuff at the opera where he would like have them make satires of the church to the, it was, he was not about the church. Um, and he also takes a pretty lax stance on homo homosexuality, especially for the time, because his brother, the Duke of Orleans, Philip, whose party that she was at, uh, is openly gay and gender nonconforming, um, which sounds pretty familiar. Um, so basically she knows how to use her connections that she has in the time and uses the time that she was born to her advantage which I think is super fucking badass. I ain't gonna fault her. Yeah, I mean, like, she's yeah. she was definitely born into a position of privilege, given oh, yeah. where like, her father's station and all this stuff, but she fully uses that to kind of live her own like, authentic life, which I think is very cool. Uh, and also, like, using the, the, the system against itself is badass in my book. So, that's, uh, that's our girl. Uh, I love her. Also, I I kind of think of her as a as a lady Han Solo, or tech. Actually, he's just dude her. <laughs> Come on, think about it. Queer, all over the place, chaotic. Shoots first. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. The only. Hmm. But like, I need a little bit more of a spicier personality because Han Solo is very kind. Because he's scoundrel. He's he's like the cool he's part like, of that. Well, he's, he's not even cool. You remember in like episode a, four where yeah, he's like, "Oh, this everything's fine here. How are you?" And then shoots yeah, the man, you're control right. panel. <laughs> he's not. Yeah, actually that's that true. Cool. I'm trying to think of him like when he's saying like "I love you" type shit. Yeah, I'm like, oh, he's trying well, to be yeah. smooth the groove right there. But yeah, you're Anytime right. You're he's right. Talking to Lando or Leia, very smooth. <laughs> or honestly, yeah. Luke too. Other than that, not so much. Um, oh, one last thing. Uh, Theophile Gautier, I don't think I said his name right, uh, took the stories of Julie and used them as the basis of his 18th century novel, Mademoiselle de Maupin, uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, his 19th century novel. It was the 1800s, uh, which, is, which has her name, Mademoiselle de Maupin. Um, and she, uh, or I'm sorry, the book is a pretty radical view of like love and gender and sexuality for the 1800s. I think the core ro like relationship is a polyamorous bisexual one. Like the main characters with a woman and a man at the same time. And they're all chill with it. It's very interesting, especially for the 1800s. So yeah, there's that. <sighs> and now we're done talking about Julia. We can go on to our builds. And now we'll go to our builds. All right. Who would like so to go first? Would you like to go first? You go first. I, I want to see Me? what you did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> So I, like I said, I did a multi-class of Bard. Okay. Yeah. 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 With? Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
good, good, so, good. Uh, but I also, I actually, I even one upped it for her, uh, for a human. I actually made her uh, like a, a mark of the passage human, like from Eberron. Ooh. So, yeah, so it can give her, basically you get a little bit extra special traits, which should have been the smart thing for me to do is have it up as I slyly bring up my PDF. That's true. But um, the reason why I was kind of going with that a little bit is the fact that she was kind of always on the run and slipping in and out and yeah. was able to travel so effectively because I'll be very transparent. I would have gotten caught and I don't know how to navigate through mm -hmm this that and all that in between so the fact that she was able to oh all right i killed three dudes went to a party oh well shit's going south i need to go skedaddle so that's where i was going with the uh mark of the passage because they do get some uh they get um uh, with their transportation and all that right. um so i actually got her up to level 14 bard and oh, then for, did, you, did you do a full level 20 Oh, I, I, okay. This is what I did. Went straight to level twenty, and this is why. And okay. I even did more. Oh my god! Because we can't pass level dude, 20, no, no, no. I gave her more feats because you can do that oh, manipulator. Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. The reason why I did that is because this woman is so OP and powerful in real life. She has surpassed normal men. She has surpassed the point of history. She has become a legend, almost to the. To that kind of ways. So that's why I made her into a legend in D&D. &D. I love you it. You can't I touch this. And um, I don't care if you want to argue with me on this. I no, don't care. Do your level 20, hon. I will. Because it was just like, it's you can't beat her. You want to, but you can't. Suck it up. It's just <laughs> that. This is how it is. So, yes. I made her level 20, 14 level bard. And then afterwards, I did... Uh, six levels of fighter so it is the college of uh, eloquence that's what i did mm. for her yeah, and the like point it. what did i and the reason why i chose that is uh do 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 oh it's obviously more singing and all that but actually for fighter i was i made her a battle master with her martial archetype as like mostly for combat superiority yeah so I really focused her with swords on all that. So I was very adamant about like uh, certain feats that she did. That's why I wanted her to at least be mostly bard. And then the last part is all fighter. Hence why I built it the way it is. And because I am that a-hole who decided to give her all the fun weapons. We can delete that. I don't care. But I was just like, I'm going to make it all rapier. But I gave her a nine live stealer, which basically... <laughs> It's the best thing. It's like it's a sword that um, you could do so much more damage. But uh, you have to have a uh, so if you get hit with this, you must succeed a constitution saving throw of DC 15 or be slain instantly by the sword's <laughs> tear, its life force from his body. Oh, shit. A, or construct or the under. It's like it just it, it just takes it from you. It's like a soul stealer. And I was thinking of men's egos in tears. So it's like, uh, so that's why. Also, she gets the lucky blade because <laughs> there. I do believe this chick had some luck. Oh, I, 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 I she's talented. No, I know it's like a legendary thing or whatever, but like it's cool as fuck. Oh no, no, yeah, absolutely. I was just like, yeah. There's like the way again. It's so miraculous. I yeah. had to give her weapons that were worthy of her to be in her hands. Hell yeah. Exactly. So yes, yeah, so I got uh, obviously some higher on that, and also the fact that. Because <laughs> I'm still learning a lot of this, like I like I don't know everything. But I was like, for her fighting style, I was like very much like, oh, okay. So for her extra feats and all that, like how she would attack and spells, like because I didn't realize what uh what was it superiority die. I was going mm -hmm. into that, so fainting uh, like uh, or like uh, faint like she would psych people out. So I was very thinking yeah. like psychological stuff where. You can spend one die, and basically you gain an advantage on your next target when you hit. And let's be honest, she never missed, so she would always get an advantage always over the next advantage. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basic. And what else? I'm gonna go into some of the other fun stuff her like feats and what'd all you, that. What did you stat I, her out to? What did her stats end up being? Oh, so I her strength is actually her lowest. 
-hmm. That is 12 with a plus okay. one. For dexterity, uh, it's 17. Nice. Because nice. I think because she was very nimble in my point of view. Constitution, 15. She's very yep. strong will. Intelligence, uh, I gave her 13 because of how, like we were talking about photogenic memory, uh, all that stuff. She was very sure. smart. Wisdom, a little bit lower. It's I actually in my <laughs> Like I kind of made her strength and wisdom lower because I was just like, girl. She doesn't need, need them. She's just that good. Yeah, exactly. Also, and she's feel, very rash and wisdom feels very, like low wisdom feels very rash to me. Right. I feel like she she's extremely intelligent and she knows it. That carries a little bit of like an arrogance a little bit where sometimes <laughs> wisdom would have really helped her out in certain moments. But who cares? I'm not judging. And then of course, charisma, I maxed the out for 20 there yeah, is yeah, you did. I, I was like it has to be charisma yeah so uh her armor class with everything i souped it up it just went to 16 and all that so it's like near it's hard and yes. then her hp max is 189 because i yeah because like yes. i said i added some feats that definitely probably maybe i not should have like tavern brawler and tough yeah. but i was just like this chick is on the run in France. She's tough. She gets it. Full HP. Yes, let's do this. Tavern brawler. Basically, you improvise weapons and you just like just grapple. And I'm like, yes. You don't flash your tits at a tavern and you're not getting into a fight at one point in your life. Yeah. <laughs> She's just like, here we go. That was it. Savage attacker. I was just like, I was Ooh, adding. Yeah, yeah also, you you probably gave her more feats than she de technically should have, but also it, it works. I don't care. But the reason why I say that is she's such a legend. You give a legend what they're due, and that's yeah. how I see it. Now, will totally. I be able to play this character? Absolutely not. No way will I be able to. We can cut her down to make her playable, though. Like if, 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 it comes, if, if it comes around to the one shot that I want to run, we can cut her down to make her playable. Oh my God, please do. Because I'm like... I, I want this one. I was playing and I, I fell in love with it so much. Like defensive duelist and all this stuff. And I, I also with the bard aspect, which is something I haven't really kind of delved into yet. Yeah. But like her spell slots, I for her cantrip, I gave her vicious mockery. <laughs> Good. She deserves it. To unleash your string of insults laced with subtle enchantment. The, I can see her like just just in the fight. Come on. I feel like it wouldn't even it wouldn't even need to be said out loud. She could just just vicious mock them with her abilities. Exactly. And then compelled duel, which I just yes. thought that I that that's duel. her. I wanted compelled duel so bad, but none of the classes I gave her had that in the spell list. And I was like, God, really? Mm -mm. Mm. Just bummed. Oh, absolutely. Compelled duel. Uh oh, misty steps and pass without a trace. And that's due to uh her uh, mark of the passage. So yes. that that's one of the reasons why she's able to get her dexterity and just literally yeet the f out. So I really oh made my. her. I really made her so she can get in and out of places super fast. But she's yeah. very like precise with her swords and all that. Movement of freedom, pass without trace. We said mm -hmm. that. What else we got? Don't we have any other little? Oh, any, any other fun ones? I I have a ninth level spell. I do have one. And yeah, that ninth level is, spell is a bard at 16. So this is because of the lucky blade. Wow. And with it, you get oh, one wish. Of lucky blade. Yes, you get a wish. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I I feel like like that would be the, that, 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 was, that sword does give you a wish. I forgot about that. So that's for, <laughs> like dude, performance and persuasion. 17. Acrobatics, 15. Wisdom, wait, no, I survive. Okay, 13 is still very good. And then you have, like, obviously, medicine and need. Oh, that, I don't want to say that because her, her favorite, like, girlfriend died of that. And that makes sense. Her medicine is four. So it's oh, like, okay. like I said, it fits. She's not, she's not a medicine person. She's not a cleric. <laughs> no. And then it's like the whole band and the what? Give her celestial she's common, draconic, dwarvish, elvish, whatever. That doesn't matter. Yeah, the language. The, I gave her Elvish because that seems like the most French, <laughs> the most French D and T language. It's like um, aristocratic, and then everything. Yeah, exactly. Else. So I'm trying. Am I missing any other thing? Like, 
No, dude, that's fucking great. I love that. Oh, I'll send you the rest as like my inventory of like equipment. I was just like, yeah, we're going to do the and ring of invasion, ring of yes. feather fall. Like I had like a whole bunch of shit ready to go. For sure. I, I have a few of those myself. I'm just like, if she had an item, it would be one of these. Exactly. It would be that. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have. What do you got? Dude, that's so good. I... Uh, also did Battlemaster, but I nice. did foreign Battlemaster. Oh, God damn it. It's fine. Be it's your bi-weekly reminder to medicate your cat. Go medicate your cat. He's asleep. It's okay. I'll medicate him after or I'll ask Bailey too. It's All fine. All right. All right. He's fine. It's it, it, a couple, a couple minutes won't make a difference. He's okay. Um, anyway, so fighter, I four, uh, monk four and warlock two. Wow. Okay. Wacky. So, uh, walk for, me through this. Yes. So, for Fighter, I also did Battlemaster. Um, and I gave her, um, what did I give her? So, she gets, I gave her dueling style. So, she gets plus two to damage when wielding only one melee weapon. She yep. only ever needs one. So, that's what she does. Yep. Second wind, action surge, all that good fighter stuff. And then her three maneuvers that she has for right now are parry and repost, which are both fencing, fencing really? ones. Really? Work. Okay. Uh, and then evasive footwork, so she can get around and do her yeah. do her things. Um, let me see. I put, why did I put a star by that? Did I have a reason to put a star by evasive footwork? Yeah. Oh, um, when you move, you can expend a superiority die and yeah. add that number to your AC um, until uh, until you stop moving, which is super cool. Nice. So keep her keep her keep her safe. Uh, and then I did Way of the Drunken Master for Monk. That, that's, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, she, you know, the, the idea of like jerky and unpredictable movements. Um, you can't pin her moving, down. Yeah, can't pin her down. Um, so from that, she gets a drunken technique, which is you learn how to twist and turn quickly as a part of your flurry of blows. So whenever you, you, you use flurry of blows, you gain the benefit of a disengage action and your walking speed increases 10 feet until the uh, end of your current turn. So she really? can flurry blows, disengage, get out, and then move an extra 10 feet, which has to be useful. That that totally works. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so th that's pretty cool. Um, was there anything? Oh, um, and also deflect missiles, which I, I don't think she was having any missiles at her. But I still think it's useful and fun. But like the idea that she could just be like, Pff. in the D and D world, it is. That's oh, in the D and D we're... world, it's very yes. useful. In her world, maybe not so much, but still very cool. Uh, it, it, you only need it once. <laughs> um, also, she gets unarmored defense. Her AC would have been the same either way, but she never wore armor. So I was like, if I can have unar unarmored defense, I'm gonna take unarmored defense. Um, and then she also has, where was I looking? Oh, she gets uh, unarmed strikes as, as monks do. And she was a tavern brawler mm -hmm. as, a, as a human being. So being able to swing a punch is pretty, pretty badass. Um, and then I gave her, sorry, I need to, I need to flip through my book and find my, my words. I gave her a uh, hex blade as a warlock. Um, oh. Hexblade. I love Hexblade. I think Hexblade's real fun. So for Hexblade, you get Hexblade's ah. curse. Do, 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 do. I have to look over here. I'm silly. You didn't uh, do Eldritch Blast? Oh, she does have Eldritch Blast. There Don't we worry. Go. No, no warlock can be a warlock and not have Eldritch <laughs> Blast. Are you kidding? I'm just there. I, I'm learning and I'm like, that's the number one. <laughs> that's it. That's you the better, one. Huh? You gotta pack it always. That's right. You gotta pack it. Uh... <laughs> So, um, Hexblade's Curse is super cool. Uh, you can curse as a bonus action a creature that you see within 30 feet of you. Uh, they're cursed for a minute. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a curse, not a hex. I'm sorry. Um, and while that creature is cursed, you can uh, gain bonus damage to the target creature, which is your proficiency bonus. So that would be an additional four damage. Right. Uh, any attack roll you make against that creature is a critical on a 19 or a 20. Dang. Yeah. 
And then uh, if the cursed creature dies, you regain the hit points equal to your warlock level and your charisma modifier, which for her would be six like hit points if she killed it, which oh, is no. pretty cool. Um, and then there's also Hex Warrior, which is um, you you get there's there's extra proficiencies, but they don't really matter. Um, but you can touch a particular weapon at the end of a long rest. Mm -hmm. And until, I'm sorry, I think it's until the next long rest, um, when you attack with that weapon, you can use your, your charisma modifier instead of your strength or dexterity when you're doing uh, attacks, attack and damage rolls. Uh, and then you can just switch it to a different weapon if you want to, too, which is cool. Yeah. So, so instead of it being like a plus two or a plus three, it's a plus four okay. uh, on top of everything else. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, she doesn't have a patron because she's not a third level, but, um, I was going to make King Lou the 14th her patron because he basically was, um, very fair. And then uh, she has Eldritch Invocations, which is Agonizing Blast, which adds Charisma to your Eldritch Blast and Beguiling Influence, which gives her proficiency in Deception and Persuasion. Ooh. Uh, speaking of all her proficiencies, she has a good deal of them. Uh, she has acrobatics, which is at a plus seven, athletics, which is at a plus six, and then deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion are all at plus ten. Yes, they uh, are. And as a level ten, that's pretty dope. Yep, um, that's really good. She has three key points where she can, um, you know, oh. do all the things you do with key points, which is very useful in a fight. Yes. Um, and let's look at our uh, our spells. I, I gave her Eldritch Blast and also Press Digitation because, like, cleaning yourself up, elf, blah, blah, cleaning yourself up after like a fight, especially at a ball, Press Digitation would be very helpful. Um, they would, yes, yeah. they would definitely. Uh, she gets Shield and Wrathful Smite from being a Hexblade, um, and then I gave her Charm Person because you have to uh and then witch bolt because i like witch bolt and i think it fits her very well. yes um that works really well and then yeah she has a proficiency with a disguise kit and she also has one with alchemy kit because i thought alchemy kits were the closest thing you were going to get to an arsonist's kit Damn. Uh, <laughs> her hit points are 74 which is not bad uh her ac is pretty low at 13 um but she, I, but she also has shield, and I was like one of the items I thought was a ring of evasion for her. I also, I also thought about giving her the luck blade, uh, also bracers of defense and boots of speed were other ones that I thought of for her. Nice. Um, and her initiative is plus three, and her base speed is forty. But if she does that, that lovely, uh, drunken, drunken technique, it's up to a fifty. That's crazy speed. Oh, and she has an entertainer background because that was how I pulled in the like opera oh. scene. Because I, I also thought about Bard. Um, what did I write? But that was how I wanted to throw her in drunk uh, boxing. Yeah, for her background, I wrote entertainer. Mm -hmm. I got entertainer. Yeah. I, I oh, will say, yes. I got to ask, you know how like there's like, what was the allies in the organizations? <laughs> what did you write what? for? Oh, allies well, I... and organizations. Um... I, I gave her like the opera, uh, King Louis XIV, Philip. Uh, I put her husband in there. I also put Count Dominic in there. I was such an, a smart ass in mine. I was just like, I couldn't think of anything. So I just, I don't know. We can't, I don't think you can see it there, but it just wrote the gays and the theys, himbos, chaotic bisexuals, <laughs> non problematic breeders, aka straight people, the whole alphabet mafia, and a dragon. And then her organizations. <laughs> The No Fucks Given Club, <laughs> Bitch Better Be Have My Money Tribe, Mysteria Girl Society, and Consent is Fucking Important Troop. Fucking hell, Amanda. That's amazing. Her motto is here for a good time, not a long a time. Long time. <laughs> I love you so much. That's fantastic. I was like, this, oh. I gotta think how you would role play. This is where her. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. Yeah. I'm that extra. I, I love you for it. I loved talking about this person with you. Thank this you so much for joining me. Ah, no. Shush, no, med your cat. I will. He's fine. He's still asleep. He's on his little pillow. He's just a peaceful boy. Oh. Um, <laughs> Meg says, medicate my nephew. I'm getting to it. It's fine. 
Oh, you got a warning text. Meg, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, well, then we will, we will close that out before I get my butt kicked by my best friend. Thank you guys so much for joining us for all of yes. this extra, extra chaos. Um, Amanda, is there anything you want to plug right now? Oh, God. Why, why do I always fail at this part? You don't what? have to say anything. You can no. just say... Yeah. We have we have new stuff coming out Fridays and then Mondays Aaron who is so great like gracious to help us with the stream right yes. now even thank though you so can see him as always my love. so thank you you should watch him Mondays he's actually very very good and then obviously Sergio's uh, Iron Sworn on Tuesdays yes, and yours who's coming in next week do you it's know yet Caleb yeah, <gasps> Caleb. yeah. <sighs> what are you doing. Oh no, 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 for this. Oh no, the K oh. sorry, I thought you were talking about Iron Sword. I'm sorry, no. I got well, no, no, Kayla, we still want you on Iron Sword and we're looking forward to it. But I, I thought Kayla was coming in next week for you. Oh no, I have, I, I, it'll be my gap week next week, and then uh, got it, got it, got it. Week after, we'll be back with a new person. Um, oh, I just want to say thank you to everyone for kind of rolling with us as thank we you. kind of navigate all of the uh, the perils of returning to the world and work um that's why our schedule's been a little funky lately we're all trying to figure it out thank you for hanging in there with us we're some of us have been called back into work others yeah. not and some are dealing with the in-betweens exactly so thanks for hanging with us we'll try and get uh, a more specific idea out to you guys at some point but mm -hmm. um for now please uh take care of yourselves enjoy the rest of your week and thanks for joining us for here as you should know yeah, Bye. thank you. Bye. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.